Okay, we're reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya Leela, Chapter 3, and the chapter is titled The Glories of Haridas Thakur. And yesterday we read uh, about the Ramachandra Khan becoming envious of Haridas Thakur because Haridas Thakur was receiving a lot of uh, adulation from the residents of uh, this town where uh, Ramachandra Khan was the Zamandar and the big landholder. So because of his enviousness he engaged a prostitute to try and seduce Haridas Thakur, uh, lure him into uh, having a sexual relationship with her and thus uh, disgracing him. Uh, he, uh, Ramachandra Khan uh, uh, was prepared to send a constable with the prostitute. Mm -hmm. He told the prostitute what he wanted. You entice him and uh, when this happens, when you're uh, engaged with him in this uh, act, then uh, my constable will be a witness to that. He will arrest uh, Haridas Thakur and bring both of you to me. Uh, thus he will be a witness and your testimony will also be witness to the fact that this uh, person who is getting adoration as a great saintly sadhu, that he is someone who actually, uh, instead of uh, performing his duties uh, properly as a sadhu, he is really a, a lusty man uh, interested in enjoying with uh, women. So the woman went, the prostitute went to Haridas Thakur. He was staying in a uh, cave, I believe, and in front of the cave he had one Tulsi plant. And uh, so he was worshiping Tulsi and sitting in front of Tulsi and chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra 300,000 times per day. He was living by going to house to house, to the houses of Brahmins and, and Vaishnavas and uh, begging some foodstuffs. The prostitute came to Haridas Thakur, uh, but first she bowed down to offer her respects to Srimati Tulsi Maharani, the Tulsi plant in front of Haridas Thakur's residence, his place where he was staying, and uh, showed herself in a very attractive way. Uh, showing, exposing part of her body to, <coughs> to his view so that uh, seeing her beauty, she was a beautiful young girl, young woman, and uh, her hope was that uh, Haridas Thakur seeing her beauty would be, become naturally attracted 
and uh, she could then entice him to enjoy a sexual relationship with her. It didn't work that way. Instead, Haridas Thakur told her, Oh, uh, what you want, uh, oh, and of course she was flattering him also, Oh, you're in the prime of youth and you're very beautiful. What woman could resist you? Actually, I, I, don't, I will give up my life. If I cannot have union with you, then I cannot maintain myself. So I am, will be very distressed if I do not get what I want from you. <coughs> constructed a cottage. Now, it wasn't in a cave. He constructed a cottage in a solitary forest. There, Haridas Thakur planted a Tulsi plant, and in front of the Tulsi, he would chant the holy name of the Lord 300,000 times daily. He chanted throughout the entire day and night. So the woman uh, was told, uh, just uh, sit there. Uh, I have a vow I've taken to chant a certain number of mantras every day and uh, names of the Lord. So as soon as I've completed that, I'm still uh, working to finish my vow for today, complete my vow for today. As soon as I'm finished, then certainly I will fulfill your request. This was Haridas Thakur's statement to this beautiful young woman. But through the all night, uh, Haridas Thakur continued chanting the holy name of Krishna and uh, was inattentive. The woman waited and waited and waited and she sat and sat and finally daylight came and uh, nothing had uh, transpired except that Haridas Thakur had chanted uh, the holy name of Krishna and she had been listening the whole time. So she then reported this to Ramachandra Khan and also told him, but uh, the Thakur promised me that today he will fulfill my desire. So surely today uh, this, uh, our plan will be effective. So Haridas, so she comes again the next day to Haridas Thakur, the next night. Last night, and Haridas Thakur tells her, Last night you were disappointed. Please excuse my offense. I shall certainly accept you. Please sit down and hear the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra until my regular chanting is finished. Then your desire will surely, will surely be fulfilled. Tavat ihan vashi shuna nam sankirtan nam porna hoila hoile porna habe tomar man. Sit down and hear the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. When my regular chanting, until my regular chanting is finished, then your desire will surely be fulfilled. After offering her obeisances to the Tulsi plant and Haridas Thakur, she sat down at the door. Hearing Haridas Thakur chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, she also chanted, Oh my Lord Hari, oh my Lord Hari. So this is the power of the association of a pure devotee. And of course, Haridas Thakur is Namacharya, so he's the leader of us all in understanding the potency of the holy name and the uh, effects of the holy name, the proper way of chanting the holy name and so forth. And this uh, lady was so fortunate that uh, unbeknownst to her she was uh, acquiring Sukriti simply from being in the presence of this great soul, Haridas Thakur. So she sat and she also 
had the good fortune of hearing the pure chanting of the holy name of Krishna. So this means she was being purified. All her uh, sinful um, acts from her previous life were being washed away, our mind, ceto dharthana marjanam, bhavamaha davagni nirvapanam, the mind was being cleansed of all the, the dust, the coverings, uh, obscuring uh, her vision of uh, uh, what is uh, of the absolute truth, of the real truth. So she's being purified by this great soul, by his chanting, and then what happens as a result, then she begins to chant, Oh my Lord Hari, Oh my Lord Hari. Purport. Herein one can clearly see how a Vaishnava delivers a fallen soul by a transcendental trick. The prostitute came to pollute Haridas Thakur but he took it as his duty to deliver the prostitute. He could have taken advantage of the situation. He could have thought, I'm, I'm in a cottage, in a lonely, secluded part of a solitary part of the forest. This woman has come here. Who, who can say anything? If I uh, enjoy with her, who would notice? Who would know? There are no witnesses. He could have adopted that attitude. And after all, she's a prostitute, so who would blame me? <laughs> or, or maybe, who would believe her story? If she accuses me, I'm a noted sadhu, she's a prostitute, uh, then uh, it uh, would be reasonable to think that his word would be accepted over hers. <coughs> That's what could have happened. That's not what happened. The prostitute came to pollute Haridas Thakur, but he took it as his duty to deliver the prostitute. No, he didn't take advantage of, uh, of her. He took advantage of the situation. Oh, here is someone who can receive the holy name of Krishna. If I deal with her properly, she, will, she could become a devotee of Krishna. As clearly demonstrated here, the process of deliverance is very simple. With faith and reverence, the prostitute associated with Haridas Thakur, who personally treated her material disease by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Although the prostitute had an ulterior motive, somehow or other she got the association of a Vaishnava and satisfied him by occasionally chanting in imitation, oh my Lord Hari, oh my Lord Hari. The conclusion is that associating with a Vaishnava, chanting the holy name of the Lord, and offering obeisances to the Tulsi plant or a Vaishnava will lead one to become a transcendental devotee who is completely cleansed of all material contamination. So we, in, we encourage the offering of obeisances to devotees, especially to the sannyasis, the acharya, and so forth, exalted those who are uh, senior. Why? Because it helps us. The conclusion is that associating with the Vaishnava, chanting the holy name of the Lord, and offering obeisances to the Tulsi plant or a Vaishnava, will lead one to become a transcendental devotee who is completely cleansed of all material contamination. So she began, she was imitating him, oh my Lord Hari, oh my Lord Hari. And Hari Das Thakur was thinking, oh very good, okay, he was satisfied. This is what I want. She is also taking to the idea of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. She had an ulterior motive. She came to pollute, to poison Haridas Thakur. Like Putana came to poison Krishna. But Putana didn't uh, get the reaction of someone who poisons a baby 
or even who uh, is uh, trying uh, is inimical to the Lord. Well, she did in one way, but she got she got liberation. Krishna accepted her as mother because the devotee is paraduka duki. Krishna is also very merciful to everyone. So Krishna favored Putana, who came in the guise of a mother to poison him, to kill him. But she didn't she couldn't kill him, of course. That first mistake. <laughs> and uh, but although she tried Krishna is so kind, and he's so kind to everyone, that even this demoniac person, she was a demon, an asura, putana asura, demoniac person. She came to kill baby Krishna, and Krishna gave her liberation and uh, accepted her in the rank of mother, affectionate guardian. Well, this woman came to poison Haridas Thakur, to pollute, means to poison. Came to poison him. Take his mind away from his vow of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra to entice him into some material thinking. And sex life is the very powerful agent for that. The biggest distraction, the most powerful and... Uh, uh, alluring distraction for one trying to engage in spiritual life is the allure of sex life. Man for a woman, woman for a man. It takes different forms, subtle and gross. So we are practicing brahmacharya, abstinence, no connection with, with sex life. So we try to avoid as much as possible any sort of uh, thinking that would uh, give way to carry us in the wrong direction, become overcome by illusion. Sex life for the enjoyment means illusion. It means that uh, ahankara, that knot, uh, false ego is becoming tighter we become ensnared by that. We're trying to get free, but the knot will become tighter. So we try to avoid uh, these uh, those things which uh, would uh, cause the remembrance of enjoyment with the opposite sex rather than uh, acting for the enjoyment of Krishna. So a brahmachari is not supposed to see uh, the form of a woman. So uh, Mahaprabhu said even just to see a, a doll, just a, a figure of a woman, an, uh, an inanimate figure, that that uh, is enough to change one's mind, the mind of a young man. And for a woman also, this woman, this woman here is describing what is attractive to a woman. You are so beautifully built and your youth is just beginning. Who is the woman who could control her mind after seeing you? Well, it means a woman also can't control her mind. Man is, has, uh, uh, Swami Maharaj used to use this uh, analogy, that uh, man is like butter and woman is like fire. So butter is good, fire is good, but when they are together, then poof, disaster. Butter melts, fire melts the butter. Fire burns the butter. So not a good situation. So we have to be very careful about this. And so in the Vedic culture, we talked about this a little before. A, a young man, a boy, would go to the home of a guru, a Brahmin guru, and be trained in brahmachari, brahmachari life. And 
it's like a boarding school, like uh, today a boarding school, military school, something like that, where children are sent sent off to uh, be trained away from their home in an environment uh, where they'll uh, have strict regulation, uh, their activities will be monitored very closely, etc. Uh, they're separated, men and women have different uh, schools, that sort of thing. And uh, this has been the system for thousands and thousands of years. Only recently has it been relaxed, recently in my lifetime. Big uh, change just in my lifetime. Still, in uh, many countries, uh, there, and even if you just the, if you look at the history of the United States, the Civil War from around that time, and even long after that, it was very disgraceful for uh, a young man and young lady to um, be alone in some situation. So there was always, if there was uh, uh, a need to uh, go from home to a, a dance, a ball, uh, some social function, and a chaperone always accompanied the couple, the young man and woman. A, uh, a young man was visiting a woman in her house. <coughs> there was always a chaperone present. That's the system. That's the sense of system of culture, whether it's English culture or Vedic culture. That was that's the system. And uh, of course, modern modern uh, life means destruction of culture, just like Krishna talks about in the Bhagavad Gita with the destruction of dynasty, then uh, because uh, Arjuna was <clears throat> making an argument that if I kill the, my uh, cousins, stepbrothers, grandfather, guru, etc., here arrayed in front of us on this battlefield, there's so many relatives, uh, young men, Old men, grandfather Bhishma was ancient, so to speak. <laughs> he was ancient, very old. So what is their position? The, 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 who is fighting? The Khatriyas. Who are the Khatriyas? Protectors. Protectors of what? Protectors of Dharma, religious principles. So if we kill all of them, then, then who's, who's left to protect these things? Who's to stop the rogues and the thieves, the misbehavior, and so forth? So Krishna was, uh, Arjuna was making an argument to Krishna that uh, if all these uh, men are killed, then their wives will be without husbands. And if their wives are without husbands, and then also many of the fathers will also be killed. So the young, young girls... Their fathers will be killed. The older ladies, their husbands will be killed. Then what's going to happen? Because the father and the husband, uh, the brother, they're all protectors of their uh, wives, daughters, sisters. So that means... Uh, if they are if they are killed, if those protectors of the women are killed, then chaos will ensue. Then the unprotected, unchaperoned, unprotected means unchaperoned. The unchaperoned women will mix, will mingle with men. And when that occurs, then uh, there will be... Uh, illicit sexual connection. When that occurs, then what? Then there'll be unwanted children, unwanted progeny. And the term used in <coughs> the Bhagavad Gita is Varna Shankar. <coughs> Varna Shankar means unwanted children. Well, what happens with unwanted, and, and why are they unwanted? Well, the, uh, the man, the woman, they had made their union outside of marriage, <clears throat> then no one wants to be identified as the parents of the, of the bastard children. 
children without a father, right? Without a legal or proper father. So the we see it so pre prevalent in the culture today. Culture is so prevalent in society today. It's not culture, as someone asked. Gandhi, I've heard, what do you think about Western culture? He said, oh, that would be a good idea. In other words, it would be a good idea if there was such a thing as Western culture. So the Western culture has degenerated into Western society, and not the same thing. So Western society, then uh, uh, the birth rate in the last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of out of wedlock children has increased dramatically. Uh, in some sections, it can be 70% or more of the children uh, are born without a father in the household, without a, a mother married to a father then what are those children called? They're called Varna Shankar, unwanted children. Mother, how's the mother to take care? It's not the, jo the job of a mother to both uh, provide the material support and the nurturing of the children. Generally, the material support, that means <clears throat> the monetary support, who is providing the roof over the head, the clothes, the food, etc. That's generally, uh, that responsibility is taken by uh, the father, the husband. So with no father, no husband, then woman has to divide her time. Whereas previously her time could be uh, dedicated to looking after the household, which is a full-time job, especially if they're children, then uh, there's a full-time job. Raise children, uh, uh, take care of uh, the responsibilities associated with the household. Responsibil household responsibilities include uh, uh, ritualistic ceremonies, uh, maintaining the uh, uh, a deity, work, a proper spiritual education, etc. Many, many things. It takes time for these things. So, uh, when uh, the protectors of the women are gone due to all being killed in a great battle, then Arjuna is saying, then what will happen if the women become, uh, uh, the women will become polluted, then who will protect religious principles? Let's see. Woman's job is to protect religious principles. That's a big job also. And, and we see that also in our mission and all sorts of missions all over the world of all denominations and uh, all sorts of uh, spiritual and religious uh, organizations and society. They're often uh, dominated by women, naturally, because they have the, uh, supposed to have the time to and the inclination to do these things. And so a chaste woman is the protector of her husband. And the husband is protector of his wife, but the wife is the protector also of her husband. The husband protects the wife in the ways that I just mentioned, provides for her maintenance, uh, provides for her physical protection. If any uh, rogues uh, try to enter the house or uh, uh, attack uh, her, the children, or anything, then the husband uh, uh, will uh, protect or help to protect his dependents. And the and guru nasasyat, svajano nasasyat, pita nasasyat, janani nasasyat. The husband, the father, is supposed to also 
have spiritual knowledge to guide his dependence out of the cycle of samsara, the cycle of repeated birth and death. So that's another form of protection. The duty of husband, father, is to do that. But also it's the duty of a mother. It's the duty of a guardian. Anyone who is in the position of guardian, then his the duty of the guardian, the primary, first, most uh, highly placed responsibility for a guardian is to guide his dependents out of the cycle of repeated birth and death. That's the first responsibility. So anyway, I started to say so. With the uh, women and in our in our particular mission, uh, and previously I was in ISKCON, I was a parent there also. Uh, women uh, did uh, great service to the mission, great service to our guru. One time I was talking with one lady. Oh, you, you know uh, Rita. Remember her? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, she was. We were talking something about um, the condition of uh, society today, and uh, and she it mentioned something like uh, that. Uh, you know, men are controlling everything. I said, no, men are not controlling everything. Women are controlling everything <laughs> because the women control the men. May, that may or may not be a good thing. It's a good. It's a bad thing when uh, weak men are controlled by the type of women that we are talking about who are, want to pollute them. Then it's a bad thing. But it, it it can be a good thing because an auspicious lady is like the goddess of fortune. An auspicious wife, a good wife, is said to be like the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, who is. It's like having Lakshmi living in your house. So she she's a chaste woman, then she brings all good fortune to the household. And she protects the man uh, who from wandering, <laughs> seeking other women, and then losing his uh, proper position. So the woman, the wife protects the husband, the husband protects the wife, they both protect the children and nurture the children, and in this way, um, the, the happy household <laughs> is supposed to progress not only happily with each other and each other's company, but progress happily in Krishna consciousness. That's the ideal. But, so women have some responsibility for maintaining religious principles. And uh, that won't happen if they uh, don't have proper guardians looking after them. Then the tendency is to mix with uh, with men indiscriminately. And then uh, we know the result of that. So the result of that is what this woman is trying to uh, entice Haridas Thakur to do, enjoy with her. Where's, where's, where's this prostitute's father, brother, guardian, guru? If she had one, then she wouldn't be in this situation. Assuming she would follow him. That's also required. So, next verse. Rati Shesha Hoyla Vesha Usi Mishi Kare Tara Riti Deki Haridas Kahena Tahare. When the night came to an end, the prostitute was restless. Seeing this, Haridas Thakur spoke to her as follows. And Prabhupada notes here that uh, in the 
this previous purport. Herein one can clearly see how Vaishnav delivers a fallen soul by a transcendental trick. Transcendental trick means a deceit. Deceive someone. They, you tell them one thing, I'm going to give you one thing, but they get something different. It's like uh, presto change or uh, bait and switch. Oh, yes, yes, I, Haridas Thakur said, yes, yes, I will enjoy with you, no doubt, of course. Just wait here uh, for some time and hear the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. And she does, and she gets the benefit of that. That's called a Gata Sukriti. And we, uh, this became perhaps a little famous when I was in ISKCON and was uh, distributing books and with many book distributors and collectors that uh, the transcendental trick became a, a popular technique to uh, engage people in some seva. Herein one can clearly see how a Vaishnava delivers a fallen soul by a transcendental trick. What is the purpose of the trend? If it's transcendental, if the trick is transcendental, it's for the person's good. Not, it's not to do anything bad, not to do harm to anyone. It's to do some good. <clears throat> 